Hey guys, how's it going? I uh, just want to do a quick... I always say that. I always just want to do a quick video. It's never a quick video. Kind of give you an update of where I've been and what I've been doing. I've been doing a lot of work uh, other than just maintenance work, you know, pruning and, um, and mowing. It's the end of August. It's been really dry. Some of the lawns we've been skipping. So I've been working on, uh, you know, down at the shop and um, I picked up a uh, travel trailer, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, let me just give you an update on a couple of things I've done and uh, some of the cool things I did to the RV, things that maybe interest you if you're, uh, you have an RV as well. Got a generator, a couple, couple cool things, but let me show you some updates. shop still pretty much in the same condition and uh, finished product on the outside as as you saw in the previous video a couple videos ago haven't really done anything there don't plan on closing it in until you know probably another month or two when it starts to get a little colder that's when we'll finish off these this little partial wall I'm gonna put a small door and then the uh, barn doors here so I can keep the cold out and the warm in for the most part Still planning to probably just put a little wood burning stove here just to heat this up. I don't know, I may use, I've got this uh, little propane uh, unit which works really good. I'm not looking to make it room temperature in here, but it would be nice just to take the chill out so it's not freezing in here when I'm down here working. So, I've got a hole saw for the RV here. I've done a little uh, wiring up here. Uh, well, if you want to call it wiring more, just extension cord running. Picked up one, two, three LED lights that are actually pretty impressive. They don't draw much power, so they run off the solar no problem and brightens it up down here. I've already been down here a couple of times at night doing some work, which is really nice to, to have a nice well lit area. So inside the old shop or the box truck body here, I've had this inverter for a while. My little solar setup, I just got one deep cycle battery down in there that runs off the solar panels on the roof that I've mentioned before. Just a 100 watt uh, Harbor Freight crappy controller unit. I say crappy, it works great, it's just, you know, it's not, I'm sure it's not top quality. But uh, this is the charge controller here. Been flawless now, I think it's been two years or so I've had it. Almost two years, coming up on two years. I've not had one problem with it, it's been amazing. The, the only thing that did happen is the couple little bulbs that come with it. This one, uh, the other one's already taken out, goes in that little socket. Those burnt out. Uh, those only ran probably, I don't know, maybe two months and they were garbage. But no big deal. That was just kind of a little add-on that plugs in. It wasn't even really, you know, the reason I got it. It was just kind of in the kit, so I used them. So what I have is I basically just use this inverter to power this power strip, which is powering our light in here and the three lights out there. It's pretty much all I need. Oh, and the uh, the radio that I installed in here and the time clock when I have it down here. So uh, one button, we hit that and everything comes to life. This light here and the three lights that I put down here. Let me see if I can back up and give you an idea of how bright it is. It's actually really nice. It's pretty much just as bright as that at night, even though you can see there's a little light coming in from my clear window on the top there that I put in. If that's what you want to call it but uh yeah that's that's uh i think they were 20 or 30 dollars a piece for those lights like i said they're very low power because they're led they're not the typical fluorescent even though they look like it uh, hopefully I don't, I don't know how that affects the camera we'll see maybe i'll find out more at night i don't know if there's any flickering going on but it's actually still charging the battery right now even running all those lights because it's daytime and i got the radio here which uh, is Bluetooth, so it just connects to my phone. So when I'm down here listening to podcasts, working, whatever I have, where did I put the speakers now? Oh, I got one speaker right up here, and then I got a speaker out here, so I can hear it whether I'm in there or here. I just did a little neatening up place up here for all the uh, kind of the power tools. Got a little charging center down here for all my different charges. All of those run off of the solar as well. It's the only power I have down here. I've yet to even come close to running out of power for the couple hours I might be down here using lights or, or whatever. I also picked this up just in case I need to, this is just a Harbor Freight, uh, you know, I already had some of the Harbor Freight stuff. I also have a bunch of Milwaukee stuff too, but it uh, runs off of those batteries. Just a really nice bright LED light, which is good for if you're working under a car or something. 
So I also picked up, I don't think I've mentioned that yet, the uh, larger version of the Milwaukee grease gun, the 18 volt. This thing's amazing. I've been wanting to buy this for a long time. I've already used that a bunch. The reciprocating star as well from Milwaukee. This is the uh, Harbor Freight. This is Milwaukee, the Ratchet. This is Harbor Freight, the Earthquake XT. That's been really nice. Had that for over a year now. Uh, and this is the Milwaukee Impact. And I also have a Milwaukee Drill. When we get to the RV, you'll see that. So I've been doing some stuff in the RV. I have this angle grinder as well. Sharpen the blades of that most of the time. I still got to get the uh, bench vise down here. So anytime that I need more power than that, if I wanted to run the welder or the air compressor, I picked up a inverter slash generator. I'll show you in a minute. Predator 3500 from Harbor Freight. Great little unit. The thing's amazingly quiet. I've been super impressed with it. I think I've got 20 hours on it so far. I'm just ready for the second oil change. And I'll show you that right now. It's actually running. I got the AC going in the RV. And this is it here. Any video I see on this online, when you hear it, it, it doesn't do it justice for whatever reason. It, it sounds like as loud as any other uh, generator I've heard on camera. But when you're here in person, it, it's amazing how quiet it is. Like walking pretty much to here, I hear the wind blowing more than I hear that inverter, the generator. And that's, uh, that's running the air conditioner full blast right now. So that's as loud as it gets. It has an e echo mode or economy mode that actually it uh, idles down and you know just puts out a little bit of power. So while we're here, this is the RV that I picked our uh, travel trailer. It's a 30 foot Sunny Brook 2001, I think, 2000 model year. It's in, I would consider very good shape, especially for being 20 years old. Again, it's 30 foot. Uh, it's got a couple of little dings and damage here and there but it's all in all a very solid unit uh, I already took it out for a couple of days uh, about an hour away we went to stay at a friend's house and I uh, did a little camping trip just as a you know a starter you know to see what it's like uh, I did have to put a new battery so I got a nice hundred amp hour deep cycle in there I plan to add another one uh, and a little bit of solar on the roof at some point but that's another thing a two uh, you know uh, I think they're 20 30 pound 40 pound I don't know what they are not the grill size, but the next step up from that, two of those tanks in here. I also replaced the, uh, the switch over valve in here. It had a small leak on one of the hoses and it was dated. So it was like $39. I got a, a whole new unit. I'm not going to take this cover off to show you that. There's nothing special about that. And uh, that's down the side. It's got a really nice awning uh, that comes out, retractable awning. Uh, this unit only has one door and one slide. The slide has the love seat. We'll call it not a couch because it's a two cushion and then this is the uh, dinette table you know typical it's got the bunks in the back and the bathroom in the back as you'll see on the inside and then we got a full-size queen bed up in the front here uh, so we'll, we'll go inside and show you that still have the 2011 duramax love that truck almost liking it as much or more than the cummins uh 2500 that i had goes back and forth I still really like that Cummins it was a little more fuel efficient a little a little better you know for over you know it didn't have the depth fluid and all that other stuff you know because it was an older model the interior was still really nice uh, for a 2005 I think it was where this is a 2011 you know, this is a little bit more modern but that was still really nice but it's going back and forth I think if this truck was white I would probably like it better because I hate I don't like the blue I mean not that I don't like blue I just it just doesn't really match the company theme so but uh, this truck has been uh, been really good for me so far as well so that's working its way up uh, those are actually the stock wheels and tires that came on it some really good tires I just got the little bigger with the aluminum wheels off of Craigslist so let's go inside and I'll show you uh, the inside and a couple of things I'm doing um, actually, while we're on the outside here, I'll just give you a quick tour around. This is the uh, furnace. I think it's a 2500 or, th or 25,000 BTU furnace. Uh, this is the back of the refrigerator unit. And I didn't know any of this, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this is the model, by the way. It's uh, 30, which is the 30 footer. And then the 08 is sleeps eight. And the SLE is the model. Uh, aluminum superstructure. So I'm assuming it has 
aluminum studs not the uh, not the wooden I have done some work to the hot water heater that was one of the th problems when I first got it the tank was cracked because somebody didn't winterize it properly so I actually replaced just the tank not the whole heater itself go back to the back here really nothing special in the back spare tire yeah Sunnybrook light they call it probably because of the aluminum but uh, so there's that Little outside plugs this is the fresh water tank fill up and uh, our door and steps let's go on inside just about the perfect size that we wanted big enough to not feel cramped but not super large where it was just too much to to navigate around so let's back up got some stuff out like I said I'm doing some work that I'll show you uh, this is where we came in typical typical layout for most travel trailers I think you know there's so many different styles now but back then they were pretty much all the same cabinets sink uh, this is to check your levels and all your tanks and to turn your water pump on electric hot water switch which it runs off electric or propane got a propane stove this did not have the igniter you had to light this with a lighter and there's no propane on but I'd show you but there's this little electric igniter that you can see the little sparks there I added uh, so these two burners automatically ignite with that unit it was $16 and I just put that kit in recently pain in the neck to try to find a lighter every time you want to light the stove so I I put that in I changed over to all LED bulbs and all the lights in here just so it runs off less power I hopefully the air conditioner isn't drowning drowning our noise out it's pretty quiet I also added this battery monitor it's blinking right now because it's charging because the generator is running but it tells you how many amps plus or minus are being drawn on the battery right now the DC is actually charging the battery 1.4 amps despite everything that I'm running on the DC side battery voltage you know it's got a battery meter tells you how much amp hours uh, that are going into it the percentage of battery left 100% because it's fully charged got a uh, propane leak detector down there fire extinguisher under here we just got a bunch of utility type of stuff that's where the water pump is all of that is in really good shape working really nice like I said for a 20 year old camper I'm pretty impressed at how how clean it is and in good good shape we've got our, our hood here with our uh, LED light and fan for when you're cooking oven cooked some uh, pizza the other day so we haven't cleaned it out there's a little bit of burnt cheese in there again that runs off propane we got the refrigerator this runs off a of propane or electric which is very common I guess for these it's actually already cold in there I just fired up the inverter I'm s I mean the generator I'm surprised it's running a microwave you know nothing special Dometic or all the, the brands uh, I think the air conditioning unit as well is a Dometic brand I think it's a 13,500 this is the uh, controller for that and then we just got you know some simple stuff down in here Nothing really up here. I think we left some bread in here that's going to go bad. That's from last week. Got to take that out of there. Well, we'll continue going this way, work our way around. Here we just got some big closets. I may convert this to some type of more usable space. I may chop this down and do a cabinet set up to hide all of the utilities because the hot water tank and stuff is in there. And then actually have this a shelf with maybe a mirror or something. I could put a TV here which would be better than these huge doors because this is the bunk set up here for the kids found this ladder we just bolted on here to get up to the top bunk but each bunk has its own little light its own little window really nice you know little uh, cot mattresses on it got another window down here emergency hatch so that's nice uh, bathroom a little tight but sufficient we actually have a tub shower combo um, I'm five seven five eight. I fit in here no problem. My head's up to about here. I think if you're six foot, you might be touching the ceiling, or uh, you'd be sticking your head up here. Got a little exhaust fan um, with some pine needles in it. Little vent, uh, little vent window. Typical shower and everything here. Sink. Uh, I don't know what this is. I can't get it out. It looked like calamine lotion at first, but it's. Uh, it's kind of a, I think it's a plastic sink so I didn't want to be too abrasive on it and I couldn't get it to come off I want to see about that maybe just replace the sink altogether because that both of these being like that off-white faded color kind of dates it It'd be nice to have maybe a bright white like the rest of it the toilet works well you know flush and rinse and all that stuff a couple of cabinets up here you know just for your typical bathroom type of stuff 
you know, towel holder. Basically all you need in the bathroom. Uh, it's got a heater and an AC vent so it can stay whatever temperature you got the rest. Uh, it's also got a little hole in the door to allow some of that to get in or get out. Over on this side, fuse boxes for the 120. Just simple, you got your AC, your water heater, MW microwave, back and front receptacles, and then the main power shut off, just a 30 amp unit. Um, in here is, uh, this is the plug that goes out the side. This is supposed to be the place that you would put a TV. You know, when this came out in 2000, a tube TV I think was still kind of mainstream. They had flat TVs, but uh, not everybody had them. So, you know, it's designed where you would plug in here. You know, you've got an antenna on the roof with a, a booster. This is a 12 volt circuit. And then you've got a plug here. So this is typically where you would put the TV, which, you know, if you're sitting in bed all the way over there, you're certainly not gonna try to see that and even from the couch that's just kind of a silly place for a TV so that's why I was thinking maybe converting this into an area for a TV in there so if the kids want to watch something over there got the dinette section of course that turns into a bed you know this comes down to here and then you put your cushions in and then that can sleep I guess too I guess it would be two kids or small people and you know windows lights then this is a pull-out type of couch or no, it's a jackknife couch, not a pull-out. Lift it, and basically this and this become flat, and that's your sleeping surface, which is about the same size as that is when it's when it's completed. So again, you could sleep two. So they say it sleeps eight. So yeah, they're calling one in each bunk. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight in the bed. So yeah, I guess it's supposed to be big enough for two people. I mean, I fit on it, but it's just if you were six foot, forget about it. And this is the slide out. Uh, carpet's in decent shape. It's a little faded. Not sure if I'm just gonna go with it or, or replace that in the future. Everything is kind of matching and dated about the same. Like, so if I kind of update anything in here to make it look newer or more modern, I think it's gonna A, look awkward and B, point out the rest of it and you'll end up having to redo the whole thing. So I think I'm just gonna kind of stay with the styling. I don't hate it, I don't love it. Um, I don't mind the wood, I hate this linoleum. I mean, if anything, I may do, you know, a linoleum looking or a uh, wood floor that looks that's made of linoleum that looks like wood that's what i'm trying to say you know they have all kinds of different uh, floors you can do now this wouldn't be too bad because there's not much it's kind of a straight a straight run you know a little bit of trimming if i maybe just pull the bed out to do that because there's storage under the bed and i think uh yeah the linoleum goes under there as well uh, so you'd want to change that this is for your antenna. It's got a speaker, speaker here, speaker here. Put both of those lights on. Uh, that's hanging because I'm putting receptacles in. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, this has the sliding accordion door that comes all the way across to close off that room. If you wanted privacy as a bedroom, a couple more windows, plenty of storage with some, uh, you know, mirrors and stuff. And then it's got the two lights under here. And what I just picked up are these two of these I think I got them on Amazon um, USB charges that you know 2.4 amps not fast charging but not ridiculously slow uh, RV USB chargers now these just run right off of 12 volts uh, which is exactly what's going into these lights so my plan is uh, is I'm gonna just tap into these wires and these will get flush mounted right under here I'm gonna do one on each side uh, and then we can run our cords down for charging, you know, whatever you may be running your phone or your tablet. Because when this camper came out in 2000, not many people were worried about USB charging in their campers. So I added that, or I am adding that today. Uh, another thing that I did, oh, it's got a, you know, old school radio with a cassette, like you're gonna use that. The cool thing about this is it did have an auxiliary input. I took it out and found out inside this is just a RCA, uh, you know, typical white and red RCA cord on one side that plugs in like you would have on an old VCR or whatever. And then to a uh, headphone jack, and then I got the Apple adapter to plug into your phone that doesn't have a headphone jack. And I can just run my phone through this if I want to listen to a podcast or music or whatever. And there's a set of speakers up there, which I believe are the A set, and then there's the set of speakers here, which I believe are the B set. And you can change those here 
And uh, this works pretty good, you know, for what it is. I was originally saying I wanted to update it to a something nicer and newer, but once I found out it had the auxiliary input, that that's all I need, you know. Who, I don't need all the fancy stuff on the radio. I just need it to run the speakers and accept the input from the from the uh, phone. So this is your uh, fuse panel for your 12 volt system, and this is just a little Velcro cover. I have it off because I've I've been tapping into it. I just uh, connected this small uh, inverter, and this is an extension cable that goes over to this flush mount plug here. Uh, so this runs off the inverter, so if I don't have the generator on and I wanna plug in a uh, 120 volt appliance, I can do that. I was originally gonna run a huge inverter to run the whole camper, microwave, everything, uh, you know, minus the air conditioning. The more I broke it down, it just makes more sense. I'm just gonna run a couple of small inverters logically placed throughout where I need them uh, that I can turn on and off individually so they don't draw much power. I only use them as I need them. Uh, most everything in this camper, you know, the bar besides the air conditioning and the microwave will run off propane or 12 volt system. So uh, the only thing I would need this for, the one thing that I, I plan to do with it now is I ha I'm one of those people that has to sleep with a fan. So we have this fan, it actually was in the camper. We stick that right here, and then we can just plug in here, and it's just an on-off switch right here, just to turn it on, and as you can see, we, we're uh, blowing some nice air. So at night, on a night that uh, I might not have to have the air conditioner, if it's not, you know, 80 degrees out at night, open the windows, run this fan, Good to go, no problem. Don't have to run the generator all night to run the air conditioner. So that was my plan with this outlet. Uh, I may actually connect a TV hanger here and plug a TV into that, you know, that swings around that could kind of go for the bed or for over here. Not sure yet. That was the thinking there. I had that little inverter, so I hooked that in, just connected into our negative on our negative side, and I got it uh, just tailed into a fuse right now. It should be connected to the spade connector. But uh, I actually did this when we were camping and uh, realized I had this in my truck and I needed a fan. So I'm like, what can I do? And this is what I came up with quick. So I wanna get a connector to put on here and just move this from here to here. And then that'll be a fused because this isn't even being used, this fused uh, circuit. This also looks like another one here. I could add a fuse if I wanna add another one. The reason I have this door off is there's a master disconnect switch when I'm not using the camper. I just shut this off so it's not drawing any power, killing my batteries. So yeah, that's uh, the camper I got and a couple of upgrades I'm looking to do to it. Got it uh, at what I thought was a pretty good price. And uh, there's the inverter down there. The inverter is what takes your uh, 120 volt from your plug outside and it charges your batteries on the front that runs all the 12 volts in the, uh, in the trailer and also provides that power as well as charging the, bat the battery at the same time. Uh, you know which goes right to that unit there so but yeah a little fun uh, I've barely taken any vacations my entire life and uh, I'm always I think the reason I don't is because I think I always overthink and over prep it and try to make it as good as I possibly can and uh, what ends up happening is I overthink it so much that it, uh, I become paralyzed and don't do anything. So this was kind of a good starting point to get, give me a reason to get away and uh, force myself to stay away from work. Again, even though I worked on the camper the whole time I was camping almost. But maybe someday everything will be fixed in it and I can just relax. I enjoy it, you know, that's kind of my thing. I know a lot of you people out there are busy people and uh, you enjoy fixing things like I do. There's a little outside, uh, Thing here with just some levelers for the camper and uh, the sway uh, sway control and all that but but yeah all in all she's in uh, pretty good shape I uh, don't see any leaks uh, it looks like there might have been a little bit of leak in the front before in the past the good thing about this camper again I believe it does have the aluminum uh, it, it must because the frame is steel and I know they're not just talking about the siding because all siding, even if it had wood studs, would be aluminum or whatever metal that is, tin, whatever. Um, <clears throat> so it must be aluminum 
studs on the inside, uh, which is why they call it an aluminum aluminum superstructure. Uh, so the good thing on that is is you know whatever the little bit of leak it did have that has I believe it has a new a new roof on it now. Um, it didn't uh, you know rot out the the studs or anything, which is kind of good and trap the moisture. At least the the metal is not going to absorb the moisture and end up being uh, you know uh, moldy and all that stuff. But yeah, we had the awning out. Uh, like I said, everything works really good. Plus, uh, when I have it down here in the shop at the shop where I'm kind of like off the grid down here in the middle of nowhere, I'm able to use this as you know a a bathroom uh b if i needed wanted to take a shower or, or you know eat my lunch or use the refrigerator I could do any of that you know kind of like having a house right next to the garage which is nice when i'm not camping and the generator that i bought double duties working for the camper when i'm camping and like i said i can use it down the shop for running that air compressor or the welder which i have plenty of things to do with soon Thanks for listening to my rambling. Have a good one, guys.